Hey, good Sunday afternoon. Come on in. I am cooking Sunday dinner. Um, just something light and easy. Got two things, two meats rather on the menu today. I hope you all having a God bless Sunday afternoon. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood, y'all. And I'm thanking God all the way for the beautiful sunshine and that nice little breeze that's going on out there. It's probably in the low, mid-60s. But it is beautiful, it is wonderful, and I'm excited to be here feeling better and better and better and better every day. You know, just like I always knew, that flu bug sort of lingers. It's that cough and that throat thing, but I'm feeling better. I, I feel a lot better than I sound, let's put it like that. Narik is still on the mend, and he's doing better and better. That, that thing got hold of my baby boy pretty much, but he's coming right on through it. And I'm excited about it. So, yeah, we got to go ahead and get some, a little bit of dinner going here this evening. So, this afternoon, I am doing some, um, it's a version of Vidalia onion chicken. However, I'm using a different sauce. I'm using the same uh, chicken pies that I always use. And I'm going to mix some, um, you can use any kind of honey mustard seasoning. That's a, That happens to be Sweet Baby Ray's. This is a new... Uh, seasoning that I told y'all is by Johnny's Black Garlic Vinaigrette Dressing. This is some good stuff right here. And I was determined I was going to figure out a way to use it versus just, you know, other than just straight out of the bottle. And of course, my good old mayonnaise. So I'm going to mix um, a half a cup each of Hellman's, the Black Garlic uh, Vinaigrette, and Sweet Baby Ray's. I'm going to mix it together. I'm gonna add a little bit of onion powder to it, and I, that's gonna make my that's gonna be my gravy. So we're just gonna call that. We'll figure out the name of that chicken in a little bit. But let's go ahead and get it going. First, I've got my chicken over here. I've been had it sitting um, under some seasoning, my everything with the kitchen sink seasoning, some onion powder, garlic powder, and all like that. And I think what I'm gonna do a little bit different today. Um, I'm going to cut my pieces of chicken kind of in smaller pieces and then I'm just going to go ahead and go ahead and get them in the pan here let me see if I can get all that in view for you let's see let's see let's see oh, I gotta go this way okay there we are so I got my chicken in this pan here and it's all seasoned up and I'm just sort of mashing in the marinade a little bit that's my everything but the kitchen sink seasoning there y'all i'm just going to put a little little tiny bit more and i've got me some hot olive oil Oop, that was garlic powder that's okay the more garlic powder the merrier the garlic powder does what it does that's what i'm trying to put on a little bit more of my there we go and all I'm going to do, I'm not going to bread it at all. I'm just going to put it in here and get it browned up. And then I'm going to put it right back in the pan, make that little gravy mixture, put it in the oven for about an hour, and it's going to be ready. So I'm just going to put it in about both sides, two like so, and cut them in half. I decided just to put it at the last minute. So I hope you all are having a God bless. Sunday. Hope you got something good going on in that skillet. And I do hope all is well with you and your family. You know, this, this uh, flu thing is really going around. It's really getting a hold of these little ones. There's some adults too, but I'm just most concerned about these babies because, you know, they don't always know how to um, work through these things. So, we have to do if your babies, like I told you, we've been telling you all along, if your babies got something going on uh, in the way of a cold or any kind of respiratory, please, please, please pay close, close, close attention to it. Um, get them to the doctors. Do what you have to do. Watch that fever. That's the main thing for that, that when uh, no retail has to see. Watch that fever. Watch that fever. Okay, I got that chicken in there, and it's going along pretty good. Um, now, I'm going to let this chicken cook 
so you can see it's in the pan, it's, it's cooking right along in that olive oil. I'm going to let that chicken cook for a good six or seven minutes on each side, and by that time it should be nice and brown like I want it. While that is cooking, I will do my version of a beef wallaby. So, um, I have already started getting some of my things in place with that. The main thing that I have to do is get my, my uh, brown beef. I'm using some brown sirloin. Uh, I think it's yeah, brown sirloin. I'm getting it brown, uh, brown. I need to get it browned up and uh, get all my ingredients in there. And I, you know, put those little stuff in the, and I'm going to put it in a stuff and bake it up and start to wood up a pie or coffee. Okay, so those are cooking real good. And while that's cooking along as it is, I'm going to go ahead and get me a skillet going for my brown beef. So hang tight. Okay, we're back now. We're going to go ahead and get the brown meat going. We're going to brown it. Pound and a half the brown. One pound and a half. I see I got my chicken over there browning. We got the meat switch going on, y'all. Mm -hmm. Got that on high heat. I'm just going to let it brown like so and push it on high heat and then I'm going to keep my uh, keep it on high heat because I'm going to go ahead. I've got some diced onions in there. There's one medium diced onion. I'm going to go ahead and put it on there. Okay, we're going to let it brown, and we're going to let those onions saute right along beside these uh, uh, brown, I think it's brown mine, I'm not sure. If it's not, it's, it's a real good cut of brown beef. Okay, so we're going to let that go ahead and do what it do. And while it's browning, I'll tell you what else is going to go into it. Uh, uh, I found my little chopper. I chopped them to the side. Chopped my um, my mushrooms up in little long, little odd long squares. I'm so excited. My husband bought this gadget for me years ago, and I just found it again. So I'm excited. I'm happy. So anyway, this is like the large uh, portobellos. Just six large uh, portobellos. Say like three inch round portobellos. Just six of them in there. Got those. And they'll, they'll be added to the mixture. And I've got some um, mixed vegetables on. Just about maybe a couple of mixed vegetables. And then I'm going to do one can of mushroom soup, creamy mushroom soup. And of course, you know, i got to add my cheese in there. And of course, this ground meat is seasoned up with my usual seasoning to my taste. Okay. I think it's almost time for me to get my chicken out of here. Okay. Mm. Alrighty then. Whew. All these uh, aromas are just, I'm telling you. They're, they're mixing in together all the garlic and the other seasoning and the onion. The smell of meat. Wonderful, y'all. Okay, so this brown meat is just about done. Okay. Right in there like so. Okay, everything is going nicely. 
while that is still cooking right along, I'm just going to set the sweet burners like so. And I'll let that brown meat continue. It'll just continue to cook until all of it gets browned. I've still got a few more pieces in there that need to be browned. Now, my chicken is almost as brown as I need it to be. Okay. So we're back to the chicken now, y'all. So I want that chicken to get browned up and I'm going to transfer it from this pan into another pan and I'll make my gravy and we'll have it poured over and we'll get it into the oven. Still put it in a 375 degree oven for about one hour and it should be ready at that time. Okay. Once I get the chicken out of here, I'll just go ahead and start my uh, peppers and onions. Get to the oven. Okay. You know, this, that, that's some prep to this, but the, the dish itself, the cook the dish itself is really, really, really simple. Let me go ahead and get all this out of here. I don't want that gritty on the bottom to get too brown. Okay. So we got one medium onion going in. And one medium green pepper. And that chicken, that was about, uh, about two pounds of chicken. Yes, about two pounds of chicken. And I, I use this boneless, uh, you can use any part of the chicken that you like. But I use boneless, skinless uh, chicken thighs. That's what I use there. So I got the chicken all out of the pan. Mmm, mmm. Look, that smells good with those seasons. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn it down just a little bit. Just a little bit. I'm going to get these sauteed really good. And then I'll start pouring in my mixture of my uh, sauces, and we'll get those in. Okay, I'm going to say about a half cup. We'll go ahead and start mixing it. Set this there. Okay. I'm going to turn that space right here so you can see. Oh, there we go. This is going to be Three fourths of a cup of that uh, black garlic. Mm. Now I'm just going to do a half a cup of the mustard. And give me another half cup of uh, mayo. I need a fork, a fork, a fork, and a needle. Mm. And I need to get a little bit of seasoning on my onions and peppers. Okay. Butter. Half a teaspoon of that. Okay. And I'm going to need I don't want to get that on the bottom. No ma'am, no sir. So what I'm trying to get together now is a little bit of chicken ball. Go in on top of that. And now the chicken box, and I have the chicken broiled on paste. I want to get it in the pan. That's the real thing. Because what I want to do ultimately, I want to get that, the bottom of that pan. 
Let me show you what I'm doing here in the pan. Well, I'm just about done with my little mixture here. And of course, you know, I got to put a little bit of garlic powder. A little bit of garlic powder, some onion powder, oops, a little bit more than I intended, but that's fine too. A little bit more of that. Oh, what I'm doing, well, I'm going to let y'all see what I'm doing. I want y'all to know. Mmm, so wonderful. Okay. What I'm trying to do is I need to get this chicken in the oven now. Now, to this, I'm going to add a fourth of a cup of, um, oh, I tasted this wonderful. I need my brown sugar in there because this is tart because of the honey mustard and the um, sauce itself is tart. That's going to be absolutely wonderful. So what I was trying to let y'all see was I want all my goodie off the bottom of the pan. All that seasoning. We need all that off the bottom of the pan. Okay. Now what I can do is I see that nice cold my cold. Okay. That's from the chicken. Get there. So what I want to do now is go ahead and pour in my mixture. And it's going to, in color, it's going to look a little bit darker than the uh, the usual Vidalia onion chicken. Simply because that uh, black garlic, pull the rest of you. That's the black garlic vinaigrette is um it's a dark color so it's gonna it's gonna appear darker of course okay get that mixed in real real good and this is the gravy that we're gonna pour over that chicken and let this chicken bake for a while okay hang on i'll be right back okay y'all that gravy is boiling it's ready i'm gonna go ahead now and I'm going to get ready to pour it right on top of my chicken. Okay. Now. Mm. You get everything down in there. It's bubbling now because that burner is hot. Well, there we go. We got our black garlic and honey mustard chicken thighs. Okay. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a piece of foil over that. It's going in the oven 375 for about an hour. Put a little bit of that left over. You know I don't leave no goodie in the bowl. I don't know I don't leave no goodie in the bowl. Okay. Okay, y'all hang tight. I'll be right back and we're going to put this Wellington together. Okay. We're getting ready now to drain that ground meat into a colander. And drain it right in like so and let that oil let 
pull it right off like so. We don't want, you know, ground beef, unless it's 100%, we don't want 100% because it would be dry. So we're gonna let the oil drain right out of it. There it goes. And then we're gonna go ahead and get our mushroom sauteed. And uh, I, I bet you, you gotta saute the veggies and the mushrooms. And then we'll be ready to put this darling little, and the uh, potatoes, of course, you know, I put them into the oven, to the microwave and let them go ahead and soften up a little bit before I put them into the saute process. Okay. Okay, so I'm just simply going to allow all that oil to drain off of there. press down on to get the extra. Okay. Now we're going to whip that heat right back up because I want it to be hot enough so I can go ahead and saute my mushrooms. Okay. And we'll be ready to go here shortly. So hang tight. Okay, got those shrooms in the pan now, y'all. So I'm going to put the shrooms right there on that side. Saute them right on up. Then... That's probably two cups of mushrooms, y'all. And I think I'm going to use maybe two cups of um, veggies. Okay. Yeah, I got potatoes going there because we got to consider space in the pan. So I got my mixed veggies going. I got my mushrooms going. Potatoes are already done. You know what? I think I need two cups of these veggies. So we're just going to go ahead and let them high, high heat because you know both of these are full of water, y'all. So we got to do high, high heat on here to get this water out. Okay. We're good. And while they're steaming up and doing all that cooking and carrying on, we're going to go ahead and get our seasoning going on there so it'll cook right through as it's uh, cooking the water out. We're going to some onion powder going on these babies. Okay. A little bit of complete. Got a teaspoon of complete. And where's my garlic powder? Because we definitely gotta have a garlic powder going on. Okay, Get the garlic powder going on as well. Mm. If y'all don't think my kitchen smelling good today, because I mean, I got all kinds of fragrance aroma brother going on here. This is going to be so good because it's going to be in a creamy mixture with that creamy mushroom soup. And it's all seasoned up. And with that pie crust, it's going to be wonderful, y'all. So y'all hang on. This has got about enough. This is going to take about 10 minutes because I'm going to reduce it down to all the juices just dry right up, y'all. Don't try to have any juice left over. Just keep it going until it just reduces all the way down. Okay, we're back, y'all, and we're getting ready to put this Wellington together and get it into the oven. Um, let's see. Okay, we got in here, we've got our sauteed onions and our ground meat. So... This is the uh, sauteed mushrooms and veggies. I'm just gonna put them on in there. Okay. I've got uh, two pack for us, one for top and one for bottom. Now I'm gonna put, this is about a cup of uh, potatoes that I diced 
Well, I used my little fruit chopper thing to dice them. And um, potatoes diced up in there. And I had some leftover asparagus and broccoli. I just chopped it up and I'm gonna throw it right on there, in there. The more the merrier, y'all. Chopped it right on my little cutting board there. Okay. And now I'm going to put in, I've got a, let's see, a 10 ounce can of cream of mushroom soup that goes in. And what I'm gonna do is just, I'm gonna mix everything up really, really well. And of course, you know, I gotta put in the cheese, but the cheese goes in last, y'all. And if y'all think that's not gonna be some kind of good. And I mean, you know what? This mixture to me could be used uh, to make a uh, quiche. So, I'll probably have some left because this seems like a lot. A mixture, a whole lot of mixture. That's okay. We want lots of good old mixture to go in today. And I think I need some black pepper. I don't recall putting any black. I'll put about a half a teaspoon of black pepper in there. And I believe that's going to do it. <clears throat> get that cheese going, honey. And uh, get this filling into the crust. And we're on our way to having Peggy's beef wells in her way. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you can modify. You know me, I always modify dishes whenever I'm cooking things. I cook according to taste and to what I know my family will like and enjoy and what I know my friends will like and enjoy. So, hang on just a minute. I'm going to go find my cheese and we're going to mix it in, put it in the shell, and we're going to be ready to put it in the oven. Okay, y'all, we're coming back and uh, I'm adding about a cup of this is like flour water and flour milk well it's like flour water, but it's, i'm using milk and i also put in some butter half stick of butter so i mix that in <clears throat> this is really really good okay i put me another half teaspoon of garlic powder in there i have to have my seasonings in there where I can taste them. And then about a half a teaspoon of sage too. Okay, so now I'm gonna go in with a cup of cheddar. Oh, where's my other cheese? I got two cheeses, y'all. And then I've got a blended cheese. That, that was just plain cheddar there. This next one is going to be, and I only put the one cup of cheddar. I'm not going to look, ouch. That hurt. Um, I'm not going to load it down too, too much with the cheese because, you know, sometimes cheese can take over. And that sharp cheddar is kind of sharp. Okay, then I'm going to put, this is, I'll tell y'all, this is like five different cheeses in this one. Some more cheese. Okay, so we got a total of three cups of cheese in all in there. Mix it in. Okay. I mean, you could layer it in if you want to, or just mix it. I'm mixing mine right in. And it'll melt right through there. It'll be just fine, y'all. Okay, y'all, hang on. I've, got, I've already got my uh, crust, the bottom crust. I've already put it in the pan. Okay. Ooh, that's going to be good, y'all. Okay. Let me see. What am I looking for? I'm looking for my milk. I'm going to pour. It seems like I want it to be a little bit more loose than that. 
a little, a little bit more loose. So let's see. I'm going to pull out another fourth of a cup of milk in there. Okay. That's a fourth of a cup. Just want to loosen it up a little bit. And have that, uh, another fourth of a cup of cheese in there. Okay, and then we're gonna get ready to go ahead and get it into the pan, y'all. I gotta get this baby to bake it because I'm only gonna have to bake it for about 35, 40 minutes. Okay, so there's that. Now we're just gonna go ahead now and start putting it into the pie shell. Then I'm gonna top it. Uh, let's, let's get it here. There we go. Got the pie shell in the bottom. I don't know why I feel like I'm missing something. You know, you know me and making up stuff. I just feel, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> mm. I feel like I am missing something. If I am, I'll know it when I start eating. Okay, so what I'm gonna go ahead and do is just start getting it into the pan, into the pie shell rather. And this, you know, if you're making uh, the beef well until when you do the roll, this mixture would be perfect for that. I'm going to have some of this left. I can see that right now. Uh, and I'll save it for, you can freeze this, and you can use it for either um, a uh, quiche, or you can use it for um, omelets, either one. Yeah. Gonna be too much for this pan. I should have had a bigger pan, but this is fine. This is just fine, y'all. Okay. Okay. That's it. I have enough to do a nice. I probably could do two quiche out of that. Okay, y'all. So we got it all in the pan, and all I got to do now is get that top crust on and get it into the oven. Okay. There it is, y'all. Beautiful. Okay. I gotta get my, um, Now it's my pie shell out of the packaging. Okay, there it goes. You know, when you buy these pie shells, already made tells you to um, take them out and let them sit out at room temperature. And I did not. I brought it straight out the fridge. And I found out that that's what I shouldn't have done with that top one because it, it sort of cracked on me. Now this one. I sort of force heated it, and I hope I didn't heat it too much. Otherwise, I might have to turn my camera off and re-roll this one. I'm praying not, praying not, praying not, praying not. Y'all pray along with me that I don't have to. Well, it did make it a little bit more pliable, so I can work with it. And if it'll roll out for me, I'll feel like the princess at the ball, y'all. Y'all know what I'm saying. Sometimes you can create extra work for yourself by not, uh, oh yeah, I might have to. If it'll roll, come on y'all, come on y'all, come on y'all. I may have to put it back in the fridge and let it chill for a minute. But we're going to work it, honey, until it's going to have to tell me that's what's going to have to happen because I'm going to work it until, uh, Okay. See, this is why I'm telling you, anything, if anything can happen, it will happen. And sometimes it does when we're cooking. So you can't like this. 
I know I don't have another crust for this pot, for this uh, Wellington, so this is going to have to work, so I'm going to have to turn my camera off and get over here and rework it. Okay, y'all, as y'all can see, I've had to try to rework this pie crust, and y'all keep running around with, right along with me. I'm just turning my camera back on, but anyway, it's going to work one way or the other, because guess what? I don't have any more pie crust, so this got to work. It's got to work, y'all. Okay, let's see what's, what's happening. We're going to put it on that way. There you go, it worked. Hey! Ooh, I'm sorry. Look, it worked just fine. I'm going to have to dust that extra flour off the top. I'm going to put some butter on it, and it's wonderful, y'all. So y'all hang tight. I got to clean my hands up. Get this going. Y'all tell me I can't make it do. Tell you, well, there's a will, there's a way, y'all. Okay. All right, we'll be back shortly. Okay, y'all, everything is ready. My um, my version of uh, beef Wellington pot turned out perfectly well, even though my top crust tried not to cooperate. I got it to work, so it's done. It's wonderful. I went ahead and brushed the top with a little bit of butter, so it's ready to go, y'all. Green beans, the rice. And my black garlic um, honey mustard chicken is yummy and it's ready to go over that rice. So, listen, guys, thank y'all for stopping by. Thank you for your prayers, your comments, and your compliments. I just continue to say that you pray without ceasing. Keep those prayers going up now so the blessings will continue to come down. Pray without ceasing, doing something kind for someone, and celebrate these holidays and allow the season and the notoriety and just allow that to rush over you and to relieve some of these everyday battles that we fight so enjoy the season enjoy your life and remember we're taking care of ourselves these days we pampering ourselves we're being good to ourselves because god made us and we're special so we need to we need to be special about how we handle us y'all so listen guys until i decide to cook again i'll keep those prayers going up so the blessing will continue to come down and pray without ceasing until i cook again y'all toodles